Good evening. Good evening. Um, first thing on the agenda is the roll call. Clerk. Chairman Lynch. Present. Councilor Backer. Here. Councilor Fritz. Here. Councilor McGinty. Here. Councilor Mould. Here. Councilor Roberts. Present. Councilor Swift Kayata. Here. Manager McGovern. Here. Okay, let's have the Pledge of Allegiance. Reports and correspondence, I'll just report that we've had two letters of resignation from the school board in recent days. Uh, Kathy Walsh has taken a teaching position at the school and has resigned from the school board. And George Entwistle has taken the position of assistant superintendent of the Camden Rock Court School District. And he sent his resignation today. So um, later on in our agenda, we'll be um, doing what we need to do to set things up for a special election. And we wish both of those individuals well and thank them for their service to the town. They've both served the town well. Uh, does anyone else have anything for reports and correspondence? I do. I had a couple of items I wanted to say tonight. Uh, one, on how proud I am at Cape High School for making uh, Newsweek's top 20 list of the top 20 high schools in New England. We were the only high school, the only public high school in Maine to make the top 20 list. So I think that's quite an accomplishment. Speaks very well for our educators. Speaks very well for our students. And I uh, congratulate all of them for uh, making that top 20 list. I had one other item. Uh, for those of you that watch and uh, read the Portland Press Herald regularly, uh, just this past Thursday morning, there's a very nice article in here about uh, Officer Vaughn Dyer and the Cape Elizabeth Police Department and his uh, uh, police hat collection and other memorabilia that he has. Uh, Officer Dyer has been on the Cape Police Force for over 28 years, is a great asset to the force, as are all the officers. And uh, again, another person in the news making Cape Elizabeth look very good. So I just thought I'd bring that to the council's attention. Thank you. John? <coughs> uh, Jack and I attended the uh, COG General Assembly meeting about two weeks ago now, two and a half weeks ago. Um, nothing really significant to report. I do have a copy of their annual report and their budget, if anybody's interested. Um, the budget is actually a little bit lower than it was last year, and the best news is our dues will remain the same. Um, so I have that information if any of the counselors are interested. Thank you. Anything else? Well, we'll turn to the town manager for his report. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, I have a couple of items tonight. Uh, first, just wanted to mention uh, is a very special member of the fire department, William H. Jordan. Uh, some of you may know him, the conference room in back of us, named for a longtime council member. He is celebrating this year his 50th anniversary as a member of the Cape Elizabeth uh, Fire Department. Uh, you know, it's, it's not many that make 50 years doing anything. Uh, and really pleased that, uh, you know, Bill is a former chief, a former uh, deputy fire chief, a former captain, was involved in creating the rescue, and. Uh, you know, really, uh, you know, has been a stalwart of the Cape Elizabeth Fire Department for many, many years. Uh, they have a, a plaque in whatever forum, and uh, they've, uh, they're hoping to present it soon, uh, the fire department. They had it at the appreciation night, but uh, Bill couldn't make it, and I know the chief and some of the others are looking at presenting that, but I know the council joins in congratulating Billy on uh, his 50 years of service uh, to the Cape Elizabeth Fire Department. Uh, Secondly, I wanted to thank the State of Maine Department of Transportation and Blue Rock Industries. Uh, they're just about 99% complete now with the work on Route 77. And I think they, they really did a good job of keeping traffic moving as well as uh, getting the, the project done uh, totally 100% cost 
uh, to the state of Maine, none to the no cost to local taxpayers. So, uh, out of their local property taxes, uh, obviously a cost out of their gasoline taxes. So, I want to really appreciate the efforts of MDOT to complete that. Uh, secondly, Cottage Farms Road is wrapping up. Uh, we've, we've done a major reconstruction project there. It took much longer than we would have liked. There were issues with gas lines and other problems as we went along. And truly appreciate the patience of the uh, residents there as well as uh, the efforts of Bob Malley to keep that moving. And uh, I think he lost a little bit of hair in the process uh, going through trying to get, get it done. But I think anyone who goes down and cut it down the road now they'll see that it uh, may not have been worth the wait, but uh, it is good, uh, good to see it done. Uh, third, just want to remind, fourth, I just want to remind everyone the Beach to Beacons race is coming up the first Saturday of August. And I'm a little bit nervous that any event when it gets to its five or six year, a bit of complacency begins to set in. And uh, I think w when I really think of the complacency is with the road closing uh, that occurred that Saturday morning. And I think, you know, we really need to focus on the fact that, that the roads are going to be closed uh, first thing in the morning and encourage everyone to note the sign. Uh, that will begin to go up in, in a week or so, as well as all the different news accounts uh, uh, that virtually uh, much of the town is closed down uh, for an hour, an hour and a half on that Saturday morning. So uh, I appreciate uh, the four newspapers present uh, for continuing to include that information, or at least considering it, and we'll also have it on our website. I know the uh, People's uh, Heritage Bank, the sponsor of the race, will do all they can to get the word out as well. So, thank you, Madam Chairman. Okay, thank you. The next item on the agenda is citizens discussion of items not on the agenda. So if there is anyone here that would like to bring anything to the attention of the council, um, there's an opportunity now to do so. And seeing none, we will move to the minutes of the um, last meeting, the minutes for June 9th. Do I? Uh, Councilor Swift-Cata? I'd like to move that we accept the minutes for the meeting held June 9, 2003. Second. All in favor? I see show 7-0. Okay, um, the next one to, I think the next five or six items all have to do with the kindergarten and high school project. So. I will ask um, Councillor Roberts, who chaired the ad hoc committee of town councillors and school board members, to report on um, what that committee did uh, for the public who may not have seen the report, and um, then we'll have some motions. Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, as people may recall, back in May, the council uh, deferred voting on the high school project, at least for the amount and an ad hoc committee was uh, to be formulated, made up of three councillors, three school board members, the superintendent, the town manager would be non-voting. And the purpose of the meeting was to tie up some loose ends, uh, confirm the scope of the high school project, to review the, the administrative and procedural details of both the kindergarten and the high school projects. And I want to thank everyone that did participate in that. It was a a very interesting meeting. Everyone seemed to be in agreement on where we needed to go and what needed to be done. Superintendent uh, Forsella provided an overview of the projects and the process to this point. Um, assuming that we'd be voting on November 3, um, the kindergarten wing would get a construction in 2004 and it requires permits to be done uh, coming up in, in time for that. The design of the high school would begin in December of 2003. Uh, there would be portables at the high school. It was agreed that the kindergarten project would be undertaken with a traditional public bid. Uh, the high school project would be undertaken with, uh, by competitively selecting a construction manager. It was agreed uh, that we would include an inflational index, and uh, Bob Howe got back to us on that. Uh, Pauline uh, indicate, felt, and we agreed with her, that it would, the consensus was to bond half the total needed uh, for the amount for both projects in 2004 and the balance in 2005. The committee briefly discussed the impact on the schools during construction, and uh, Jeff Shedd felt that he was comfortable with what was being done and could follow through on that. 
The, uh, it was agreed that the building committee would be appoint a new building committee would be appointed by the town council chair, and that will be done later in this meeting, or at, at least uh, the um, beginnings of that procedure. And the town council will vote this evening on the different projects. So that was the gist of where we went. And again, there was an ex uh, six of the councils were there, so we had a good handle on that. And the chair herself could not make it uh, with a, a son coming home from Iraq. So she was duly excused. But, so that is the report, and I would recommend that uh, the report be received by the council. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Seven zero. Next item on the agenda is item 18-03-04. Um, is there a motion? I would move that we authorize expenditure of and bonding of up to one million five hundred twenty thousand dollars for constructing and equipping equipping a new kindergarten wing at Pond Cove Elementary School, subject to a citizen vote approving the expenditure and bonding on November 4, 2003. Uh, do you want the draft as well to be read into the record? I don't think don't we need, need the draft oh. read into the record. All right, so that is the motion. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Michelle, that is zero. Item 19. I would move the I would move the authoriz authorization of expenditure and bonding of up to seven million nine hundred thirty thousand dollars for improvements, renovations, and minor additions to Cape Elizabeth High School, subject to a citizen vote approving the expenditure and bonding on November 4, 2003. Second. Any discussion? All in favor. So seven zero. Item twenty is the warrant for the election of the school project. Again, I would move for the approval of the warrant for the November four, two thousand three votes on the school projects. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Show seven zero. Item 21 is the approval of the wording of the ballot question for the vote on the kindergarten project. Okay, I'll make that motion and I'll put, I, I think I'll read that one. Uh, move that the, the wording shall be, shall the town expend up to $1,520,000 for improvements and additions to and equipping of the Pond Cove Elementary School for the purpose of relocating the kindergarten from high school to the elementary school and incurred indebtedness by the issuance of bonds for such purpose in the amount of $1,520,000 pursuant to a vote of the town council dated July 14th, 2003. Thank you. Second. Any discussion? Councillor Fritz. Um, I want to make sure that what is in parentheses here is meaning that the, the amount we'd be borrowing plus interest and a total will be on the ballot so that the voters can see the total amount? How, how is that usually done? Th that is correct. It'll, it will show the current indebtedness, the debtedness that's being retired, uh, plus uh, for this particular one, uh, the total amount of principal and an estimated amount of interest, we uh, we don't know. Yeah, we won't know at the time of the vote. We won't know until the time the actual bond occurs. But there would be an estimated amount an estimated in in the wording. I guess I'm in the in a in a explanation below. Yes. On the ballot. On the ballot. On the ballot. Any other discussion? All in favor? So seven zero. Item twenty two is approval of the ballot question for the vote on the high school project. I would move the uh, following ballot question language. 
shall the town expend up to seven million nine hundred and thirty $930,000 for improvements and additions to and equipment of the Cape Elizabeth High School and incur indebtedness by the issuance of bonds for such purpose in the amount of $7,930,000 pursuant to a vote of the Town Council dated July 14, 2003 with a, and again with the same uh, proviso as on the, on the previous question. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Seven zero. I would just like to one comment, if I could. Uh, I, I guess the committee did its work. They, uh, everybody knew what was going on. <laughs> Good to see. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. I, I, and I'd like to thank the committee on behalf of the town council. Um, thank all the members who served on that, as well as the previous building committee, um, because it's been several years of work, and now it will be up to the voters in November. Uh, the next item, item 23, is uh, the approval of the establishment of a building committee for the kindergarten and the high school project. So moved. Is there any, any discussion? Um, someone might just state what the composition of the committee is okay. going to be. Um, for the people who are here and those at home, the committee will be uh, made up of three councillors, three school board members, and three members of the public, and they will, uh, should the project be approved by the voters, one or both projects, they will uh, work with the uh, school in um, constructing the um, one or both projects. And it is like many other committees and construction projects that the town has had before where we have um, public officials and citizens participating in the construction project. To Councilor Sociata. If I could um, just clarify a little. The, the charge of the committee is um, to work with the architect to develop construction and permit ready plans, um, recommend a bid award for the kindergarten, recommend the selection of a construction manager, um, for the high school project, and um, then once the bids are awarded, uh, just to read further on down here, once the bids are awarded, including the scope of work and pricing developed with the construction managers for the high school, the responsibility to move the project forward at that point is with the superintendent of schools and not with the building committee, just so people sort of know when the building committee uh, work is done and when it transitions to the superintendent. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Responsibility. Councillor Frick. When is it intended that this committee would begin meeting? Uh, it presumed after November 4th if the voters say yes on either of the projects. Well, I'd ask the town manager to comment on when he would see the need for the committee to start to work. My read of it is that the, if the committee forms tonight, its first meeting would be at the call of the chair as soon as uh, the chair is appointed. Uh, the, the committee, to my understanding, has no money to work with yet, so they, they can't be, you know, hiring, uh, you know, continuing the work of, of design, but, uh, you know, they may want to meet before the election to become familiar with the project, uh, you know, for other related purposes, but it, it would meet at the call of the chair uh, once it uh, informs. Well, I, I would note then uh, that the committee, um, the way it's worded in our package, the committee shall appoint its own chair and secretary. You, which, you would call the first meeting. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor? I say seven zero. Oh. Excuse me, I, I'm sorry, I just noticed something I wrote on this this afternoon. At the top of this, it says um, high school renovations 2003 to 2005, and I believe the finish of the high school project would be in 2006. So just, just to clarify, I'm sure it's just a typo, but just to clarify. I'm sure we can continue their existence should they. I was actually hoping to be done early. Yeah, <laughs> that would be bubbling for everyone, I'm sure. Okay. 
The next item on the agenda is approval of a warrant for a special election to fill the vacancies. Uh, our agenda only notices the vacancy of Kathleen Walsh, but as I mentioned earlier, uh, George Entwistle has also sent in a letter of resignation from the school board. So um, the approval of a warrant for a special election to fill the vacancies on the school board caused by the resignation of both Kathleen Walsh and George Entwistle. Councillor Sosciata. I'd like to um, move approval of this warrant for the special election to be held on Tuesday, November 4th, 2003 at the Cape Elizabeth High School Gymnasium. Polls would open at 7 and 7 a.m. and close at 8 p.m. Um, and this would be for special election to fill the two vacancies on the Cape Elizabeth School Board caused by the resignations of Kathleen Walsh and George Anderson. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Seven zero. Item 25-03-04 is approval of the annual liquor and other licenses for the Good Table um, Inc., which I take to be the Good Table Restaurant. And I see there is someone here from the Good Table. The treasurer. The treasurer. Chief cook and bottle washer. <laughs> is there anything you'd like to say? Okay. Uh, Councilor McGinty. I move approval of the license. Second. Councilor Robert seconding. Any discussion? Yes, I would just like to say, again, what a great asset the good table is to the community of Cape Elizabeth and how happy we are to see the restaurant rebuilt. Uh, as, every, as everyone knows, everyone was driving by wondering for months and months when are they going to be open again and then when they open now you can't get in because everyone's patronizing them again and I, I think that's great. I was there last night. So, you can... <laughs> so again, it's a, it's a great restaurant and uh, I've never observed anyone overindulging at the good table. So I think it's a good idea to renew their liquor license. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? 7-0. Next item is item 26-03-04, consideration of a request to place a football scoreboard at the Goldcrest Field and to authorize an application to the planning board. There is a letter in our package And is there a representative from the football boosters? Would you like to sure discuss this? If you could state your name and address. Good evening, everybody. My name is Tony Iris. I reside at 44 Brentwood Road, and I am president of the high school uh, football boosters. We have worked in conjunction with the, uh, with the youth football group, which uh, runs the football program for the uh, middle school age kids and younger kids. Uh, three years ago, the high school team uh, became a sanctioned uh, uh, team for the high school, it was a JV team, and for the past two years, it participated in um, the developmental league, which is now defunct, basically. And so now, uh, the team participates in Class C. And we thought that with the advent of Class C competition, uh, it would be a nice idea to try to improve the facilities down at the field. Uh, with this lovely field, uh, we think that adding a scoreboard would be a, a good way to improve uh, the, the uh, ambiance of the game, because I think it's important uh, to have a scoreboard to know what the score is. And also, uh, it adds to the drama of, of, a, of, a, of a game, knowing how much time it has left. Um, and it helps, it helps everybody uh, have a better time, I think. Uh, our, our general uh, thought was that the scoreboard uh, would be placed at the far right end of the uh, field. Uh, as, you're, as you go in, you look at the field, and it would be on the far right end, uh, because basically the sun sets uh, to the right there, so the sun shining on the other end uh, would, would affect your ability to see the score. Uh, and also for aesthetic purposes, the scoreboard wouldn't be right there, dominating the landscape. It'd be set back, as far back as it could be, uh, by the trees. Um, I, 
I don't have a photograph of the, I have photographs of different scoreboards. Uh, the one that we particularly had in mind, obviously the boosters uh, are going to fund the entire um, uh, program one way or the other. Either the boosters club would raise the, uh, the money for it, uh, or we would get a sponsor to uh, subsidize it in some way, shape, or form. Uh, we were working on trying to get Felton Rival to uh, uh, underwrite it to some extent. The cost of it is to go and buy it, direct it with all the electrical uh, work that would be needed to be somewhere in the area of twelve thousand to thirteen thousand dollars. And we're scrambling to try to come up with some way to do that. Uh, I, I, I know there are probably questions about what this thing would look like. Uh, there are two scoreboards that we had in mind. I can show them to you. Uh, uh, the one we had in mind was 20 by 8 feet long. It would have to be a pretty good sized scoreboard because it sets way back there. Uh, to give you an example, the, uh, the lacrosse scoreboard, which is out of lacrosse field, is 12 feet long. Uh, I can't remember exactly how high it is. I think it's 12 by 6. Uh, and this one would be. Um, a third again as long. Okay. Here's a, if you want to take a look, a 24 foot scoreboard, uh, which uh, is much bigger than the one we have about in mind. That's the, uh, that's the uh, one that's scoring. Here's the lacrosse field. Uh, and here is the uh, one that we have in mind here, which is 20, uh, 20 by 8. I know that all the scoreboards are maroon. Uh, I'm not sure if that's requirement that I have to like green myself, but uh, if maroon is uh, the way to go, then obviously I certainly wouldn't object to that. But anyway, I think it would be a, a terrific way to uh, to improve uh, our, uh, our facility for football, and uh, I think it's a great way for the town to kind of stand behind it. I think football is a great sport. It gives a lot of kids uh, who can't participate in soccer and cross country something to do with ball. So I really support uh, your support in uh, allowing us to go forward. Thank you very much. Why don't you wait up here for a minute and we'll just see, are there any questions for Mr. Iris while he's up here? Councillor Fritz. Um, would, would the scoreboard stay up in place all year round? I believe so, yes. It's a pretty big, pretty big undertaking to put this up. Uh, it's, it's, it's basically bolted on two large uh, I-beams. Unless the lacrosse one is on I-beams, mm -hmm. it would be on the same, same thing. I think it would be difficult to take it up and put it down. Yeah, um, and I was wondering where it would be in relation to the, I mean, the, the field is raised. Yes. And then it drops off, and then there's a path. I have a picture of the field. The trail. Uh, if I have your permission, the, 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 the football field that we play in uh, is out there. Football will go over the to extreme right. The raised area is, um, there are two fields. The raised area is one field where the uh, soccer kids play. But it would be to, to the right by the crop of trees here, which is about probably 200 yards from where I sit there. Well, maybe, maybe more than 150 yards from where I sit there, picture. But it would be off the raised area or up on the raised area? I think it would be on the raised flat. It would be, I'm not sure exactly what you're talking about, the raised area, because uh, there is the, 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 uh, the uh, soccer field, I think, is the, is the raised area. There are two fields. There's the soccer field and the football field. There's a, there's a, a, a large berm or hill yeah. off to the right of the field. It was never blasted out. I think mean, that's Councillor Fritz's concern. Just knocking up on top of that big raised hill, it would be off in the corner where it's level. Okay. Well, I, I guess my, my major concern is that it not be placed in an area that would block use of the trails. Councillor um, Fritz, what I'd like to suggest is if anyone else has questions, of Mr. Iris will go through those and then we can, we'll have ample time to discuss it. Anyone else have a question for Mr. Iris while he's up um, here? Councilor if, Knowles. If I may, in relation to, in my discussion with Mr. Iris uh, previously, the, to answer uh, Councilor Fritz's question, it's on the level of the field, uh, on the back corner, in a very unobtrusive spot. My other question is... Do you have a question? Let's question. keep it to questions yep. right now. 
Uh, if the location of the football field were moved at a later date, can the sign be moved? I don't see why it could not be. Yeah. Obviously, it would be a, a bit of work to take down the standards that hold it, but the, but the uh, sign is bolted to the, the standards. All you have to do is take it off and cut the standards and put other ones on. Um, Councillor Backer and then Councillor Slipkayata. And we do have a scoreboard currently, correct, that one of these photographs yes. includes is it the lacrosse? The lacrosse scoreboard is at the high school. So I, did, that just did, I just took a picture of that to show you by comparison of the size. That, that's 12 feet long. The one we're thinking of is about 18 feet long. There's no scoreboard currently at the field. Okay. The, the lacrosse scoreboard stays where it is. Um, I have, I'm not sure if Mr. Iris would know the answer to this or perhaps Dr. Frisella would, but in the letter that we got in the package it said that the um, high school team is entering Class C this year and that we, and I presume it means the team or the school, are required to have a school board according, a score, a school board, a scoreboard according to their bylaws. Are, are you familiar with that? I, I as to whether I it's required for I can't, I can't participation. Perhaps the superintendent can answer, answer that question. Tom, why don't you come up to the podium, please? Thank you. And I was asked that question. I, I talked to Keith Weatherby today, and as far as he knows, there's no requirement, um, at least by the MPA. I don't know. It might be a league issue, but as far as the MPA is concerned, he's not aware that it's any kind of requirement. But it may be in, in bylaws of the league, which if it is, I'm not aware of that either. Okay, thank you. Did you have any other questions, Councillor Sifkata? Not questions. Okay, well then I'll go back to Councillor Fritz for discussion, since I cut you off. Should we have a motion? Do we, do we have a motion? If I may, I'll make the motion. Uh, I would motion item 2603-4 that we consider this request to place a football scoreboard at the Goldcrest Field and that we authorize its application to the planning board. Second. Second. Councilor Roberts. Being quite familiar with that property and the trails, um, where they're uh, proposing to put the sign, it would not uh, pose a problem for, for the trails. Uh, there are no abutters that would see it. It's uh, it would be screened very nicely in that corner with the trees. Uh, a football field is a football field, and it needs a scoreboard. Um, I think there were some concerns that uh, there should be some public input. There would be more than adequate time for people to have input if they want to before the planning board. We are merely allowing that process to go forward. And I would, I would highly endorse the, the town accepting this, basically a donation from the football boosters. Yes, I'd like to also comment that uh, I happen to have a son that's in the middle school football program, so I travel to many of these games. All of the other towns have scoreboards. When our boys uh, go to their towns, our boys are ambassadors to those towns. Uh, they do a great job. As a matter of fact, the students entering the eighth grade now have a record of 22, 1, and 1. Uh, phenomenal record for a a group that's only been together for a few years. When those boys from the other towns come to our town, we want to make sure that our town is represented as it properly should be, and that's by way of a, a good-looking field, well-kept, with a scoreboard, which, as we've discussed, is in a very unobtrusive corner, not in any way in the view shed of the, uh, the Goldcrest field area. Um, and it's not costing the town any money. It's all being done by donations by the uh, football boosters and other donators. So it's, it's a great, great program and we'll look good for the town. Any further discussion? Councillor Swift-Gatta. We need like a mirror, a side view mirror, so you know who's behind <laughs> us. Um, I personally have absolutely no objection to a scoreboard. However, I have two concerns. 
that I just think as um, those of us representing the public, we should um, make sure everyone's concerns are uh, addressed. My first concern would be that if the high school renovation vote, referendum vote this fall passes, um, perhaps, I'm not sure, but perhaps the field out behind the high school um, will become the primary football field. And I don't know about that, but then I just worry about the boosters or whoever having to, it's very generous of them to put this up, but I just don't know if the location is going to change and we, we might know that in a few months. I'm not sure of the immediate need. That's only a question. I, I don't have any big concern about it because it's not town money that's being spent, but I just raised that as an issue. My second concern is um, that I fear that there may be some people in town, I'm not one of them, but there may be some people in town who would have concerns about scoreboards being out at Gullcrest because they use Gullcrest in a different way. They use it for uh, walks or skiing or whatever. And I would just want to make sure that they have an opportunity to express whatever their opinion is and maybe they think it's great, um, but there might be some people who would want to weigh in pro and con on this and as long as that opportunity is presented at the planning board, I, I'm fine with going forward uh, with the application tonight. But I would just want to make sure there's an opportunity for public input just so that um, citizens who might not be aware that this is on the agenda tonight um, just might, I, I don't want them to think that they didn't have an opportunity to speak to this issue. Councilor This is more of a process question. I don't have a problem with putting the sign up, but this is going to go to the planning board and that will be the final determined. Uh, it just won't come back to us again for the final. Can the town manager respond to Councilor McGinty's question? Yeah, that's, that's correct, John. It'll go to the planning board and they will use whatever process they wish to review it and uh, within, their, within their rules <laughs> and uh, it won't come back to the council. Could, could I ask a process question yeah. then? Uh, so is it, I should be more familiar with the planning board rules and regs, I guess, but is it part of their process that they would have an opportunity for the public to speak on this issue? They, if I, someone I, wanted to come express an opinion, either pro or con? I, I can't speak for the planning board. Uh, okay. They don't have public hearings on every item. It's at the determination of the planning board on an issue such as this, whether or not they would. But the important thing what they do do is send notice out to everyone in you know a fairly decent uh, distance of uh, any application. So all the neighbors around there will be notified, and uh, you know the word will be out that way. And it, it's also something you know would come up the earliest now with their. Uh, uh, I sometimes forget what month August. it is. It, it's the earliest at their August meeting, so there'll be plenty of advance notice. Uh, uh, between now and August uh, to get the word out so at least folks could send letters and comments even if they didn't formally accept public comments uh, at the meeting. As long as there's an opportunity for people to express their opinions and get their input weighed, then that's good. That's fine. Councillor Fritz. Um, I, I would prefer after the planning board review it it come back to us. Um, I am concerned about the visual appearance of a very large sign um, at, at a place that has these open spaces. Um, I realize there's, there's a dual purpose for that particular property. Um, and I think it's a very generous offer for the boosters to be um, offering to pay all the expenses for putting up a sign. I've expressed concerns about football in, in the past, that I, I think it's a, a sport we don't don't really need to encourage in Cape Elizabeth. I think that we have plenty of sports available <coughs> to students. Um, and my main concern is for health, health reasons for young kids uh, playing football, that particular sport. Um, but, so I'll, I'll be voting against, against 
Yes. I, I did want to mention one other piece of process that I would like to run this through. We have a, a field advisory committee that's made up of the public works director, the athletic director, and the community service director. And before this goes to the planning board, we will check this by them in terms of the exact location of the sign uh, to make sure that it, it, the reason we have that committee is to look at all field issues to make sure it doesn't unduly interfere with mowing, uh, to make sure that uh, it's properly placed for the safety of uh, those who are going to be using the field as well as, you know, we'll look in this instance as well to make sure that the traditional paths uh, away from the field are also maintained. But that should, you know, be a very informal get together sometime with some representatives of football boosters so that the proper application uh, is in before the planning board. I wanted to mention that so no one was surprised when that was suggested along the way. Pro that process usually works well. So, excuse me, Councillor Backer. This is a question that perhaps I should have asked earlier, but looking again at the sign, the lacrosse sign that is at the high school, uh, there is a there is a, a a sign affixed to the scoreboard itself that says Cape Elizabeth High School uh, with a Coca-Cola logo attached to it. Um, there was no statement made as to whether or not the scoreboard itself would have any sign attached to it that would, might identify it as Cape Elizabeth Gullcrest Fields or Cape Elizabeth anything. Um, so I guess one question would be whether or not there is any expectation on the part of the boosters that there would be any sign affixed to the scoreboard, and if there is, what it would say, and whether there is any opportunity or intent, I shouldn't say opportunity in the sense that I'm exploring opportunity, but whether there is any intent to sell advertising space like the Coca-Cola logo that appears on the high school sign. I would note that Mr. Iris mentioned that they were working with or approaching Seltzer and Ride Home for sponsorship of the sign and um, and for those who don't know, the town manager informs me that's Pepsi. So um, it would be, um, I would certainly feel that we would have to anticipate that a reasonable business investing as a sponsor would be looking for some recognition in a place where people can see it. And I don't see anyone shaking their head in the audience. Well, as a follow-up to that, I think I'd like to echo at least one of Councilor Fritz's comments that if, in fact, there will be commercial signage affixed to the scoreboard, um, as a Councilor, I'd like to have an opportunity to know what that is and what the design of it is, the size, the scale, before it's approved. Let's see, is there any further well, I would I would only comment that that sounds like a planning board issue, and Cape has already set the precedent for having some advertising on signs, as is shown by the bottom of lacrosse field. Um, and as far as dangerousness of, of sports, I played both football and then soccer in high school, and I never hurt anyone playing football, but I did break a kid's collarbone collarbone playing soccer. So. Um, both, both sports are equally dangerous if, if played improperly or properly. It's just uh, the way it goes. You want to want to see a rough sport, go out and watch those boys play lacrosse sometime. So, that's all. Well, I, I, for myself, I think that when we made the decision to have a football field, we made the decision to have a sign, ultimately, uh, my stepson played football for eight years of high school and college and it, he will tell you it's the best training he ever had in his life and he's flying helicopters in the Marine Corps so I am a football fan and I admit to that um, but on the other hand the Gulf Crest property is property owned by the town and has many many uses so I guess I would come down on the side of having it come back to the town council for a final look at um, but I want to say I encourage the sign I don't see how you can have good football without a sign um, but whether it should be a 12 foot 
sign or a 26 foot sign and whether it's and whether it can be seen from the road or from the, the trails is something that um, I guess my own sense is that I'd like to have the council take another look at it um, when it comes back so um, I don't know I guess I don't know whether I have to vote against the motion uh, or whether ask for an amended motion maybe whether there can be an amended motion that makes I preliminary approval I, I would like to propose an amendment to the motion um, and the amendment would be that once the the sign the scoreboard and whatever attached signs are figured out that they, um, they would come back that they, the design would come back to the council for approval since we are the property owner holding that land in trust for the citizens would you accept that amendment no i would not accept that amendment i <coughs> i i feel you're making a mountain out of a molehill here and it, all these football signs and all these fields and the other towns they have a little advertising on them and we're overstepping our bounds into what the planning board is there to do the planning board should be taking on what's going to be on the sign what's appropriate it's not a very difficult thing we, as you said we pretty much condone the idea of a sign when we condone the idea of setting up a football field we set up the goal post uh, a fairly small sign in comparison to signs in other towns it's going to be back in a far corner uh, the advertising would be very small and i think it would actually be nice to have pepsi advertised considering we have coke advertised on the sign at the uh, lacrosse field a little diversity of sodas here in town so <laughs> I, I would that's what i think is there further discussion uh, i second again? her uh, motion for an amendment okay i guess that procedurally we'll take the amendment. the amendment first so all in favor of for the amendment yes i have a clarification of, of, of the motion did you the amendment or oh, the amendment yeah, yeah. It, the, the, the pending motion uh is it to be my understanding that the council wishes to see the plan in the exact time before it's submitted to the planning board or once the planning board's approved it before it happened that was unclear well, that's probably because the motion was a little big. <laughs> um, I would like to see once it's once the once the planning board has heard the input from everybody, um, and once the scoreboard is figured out whether it's you know this particular one or or whatever, and if there's any sponsorship sponsorship sign attached to those I beams um, I would like to see that come back from the planning board to us since we are the property owner I mean <clears throat> I you know since it's not required to be for class C I know it's a pain but on the other hand as the property owner I, I don't know many people who as property owners would say yeah I'm gonna build a garage but I'll let somebody else figure out the design and I'm never going to look at the design for my own garage again I, I would just like to see it I don't think it's going to be a big deal once it's figured out but it's it's um it's just something I feel to tell for you Robert. and I'm, I'm probably I'll probably prove any almost any design that comes along but I just want to make sure we do the right thing for the public Councilor Roberts thank you I happen I guess I agree with Councillor Moles and that I think that we have a planning board in place. This is the, where they come into play to make those design recommendations. I think it's a non necessary delay and I won't support the amendment. I have a question for the town manager. Does the planning board have criteria for athletic signs? They've gone through it. They've, they're well experienced in this area. Okay. Uh, there's been a number of uh, school boards uh, on the school property that uh, have come before the planning board over the last couple of years. And the only um, thing I would want to add in response to Councillor Moles is that this is unlike other schools where the field is on school property and people expect to see a sign. This field is in the middle of land that was purchased by the town for a variety of uses on um, conservation uses hiking uh, skiing uh, there's the community garden out there so i i think to the extent that the field 
is removed from the high school, we do need to um, have more public input. And part of my reluctance, and again, I think it needs a sign. We can't have football games without a sign, but part of my reluctance is how many people who routinely use Goldcraft or just drive by and admire the vista on the road know what we're doing tonight. So um, that's why I will be opposing your motion, but it is not because I oppose a sign. I think it needs a sign. Opposing the amendment? Or I'm opposing Councillor Mull's motion. I will be supporting a second motion if Councillor Mull's motion fails. I would support the amendment. I don't I think, think he has a... I think we're still on the amendment, amendment. right now. Mm, right. If we approve the amendment, then we'll be voting on the underlying. Uh, oh, is that how we do it? I'm sorry. We we okay, well then, is there Madam, further? <laughs> Madam Chairman. I'm learning. Um, <laughs> Councilor Mould. For, for clarification, uh, and the town manager may know this, what, what dates are we expecting these different bodies to meet as far as when this could be approved? The point, the point being, uh, football is a fall sport. They've raised uh, almost all the money needed to put the sign in. Uh, provided the sign is approved in the next two months, it could be in in time for the fall season. So, you know, to continually bring, I'm just concerned that it, it, how late it will be before it'll come back to the town council for final approval. Sure, you, Madam yes, Chairman. Yes. The earliest possible date that would come back to the council would be the second Monday in September. Um, is there any further discussion on the amendment? Well, I, I might Council say in, in conclusion that coming back to us on the second Monday in September means that the board would not be in in this time, in time for this, this fall football season. And I, I would say, as Councillor Backer said during the election campaign about the school board, we have a school board, they're in place, we trust them to do the right thing. The same with the planning board. We have a planning board, they're in place, we trust them to do the right thing, especially when it comes to such small advertising as this. You know, uh, perhaps we have to go to an, a different amendment that allows us to keep it within that time frame. Have them bring back to us pro in a separate meeting prior to the planning board application, something that we can approve. But Having this drag on in September, I see is totally uh, unnecessary and, you know, uh, unfair to the hard work they put in over the past year to get the money in place to put this board into this fall season. In that regard, the, the sign will be there for many years. Uh, I think it, it is wise to take the time that it needs to place it correctly. Councillor Backer. If, if I could comment on what may be an ambiguity in two different things we're talking about. We keep referencing sign. There are actually two things here. There's a scoreboard and there's a sign. Um, I, I, my concern was the sign, not the scoreboard. Um, I don't have any problems with the scoreboard going up at Gullcrest, and I agree if we're going to play football, we need to know what the score is. Um, we're beyond the age where kids are playing and they don't care who wins or loses um, at this level. They do care, and I think a scoreboard is essential. I don't have any problem with a scoreboard. My only question was the sign. Now, as to, to follow up on Councilor Mole's comment, a possible amendment to the amendment is to permit the sign to go forward, I mean, the, the scoreboard to go forward without coming back to the council. Only the sign would come back mm. for council approval not the scoreboard. Can I clarify that would be a scoreboard without advertising at this point? Is that... Well, a scoreboard without a sign. By, by sign, I mean something, something in addition to the scoreboard itself that identifies it as capable as the Gelcrest Field with a logo, that sort of signage. So no... Com hmm. Anything but commercial signage? I mean, anything but commercial. Until we'd had a chance to review it. Right. Yeah. In other words, I, I don't have any problem with the scoreboard itself going before the planning board for approval and 
the planning board blessing it for final go-ahead without that part of it coming back to the council. I was more interested in the signage that might be affixed to the scoreboard. I think that's a very appropriate amendment. Councillor Slipiata, would you accept that as I, I want to make sure I understand it because we're sort of on the third generation here it's getting procedurally a little a little more than we're usually doing but um, I would be happy to amend my amendment to say that the only thing I needed I needed the council needed to have come back and review would be the non scoreboard signage to anything that's not like this. I know. <laughs> I have a visual aid for the we'll, camera. We'll have the record reflect the piece of paper that you are. <laughs> I have no objection, as long as there is public input as to this planning board, I have no objection to a scoreboard. However, I would note that if a sponsor is going to be paying for the scoreboard, there may not be, I don't understand, I don't know what limits there have been on the fundraising, but the scoreboard itself may depend upon the commercial sign, but I am willing to accept um, that the only, the amendment to my amendment that the only thing that has to come back for the council review would be the commercial signage part of whatever the construction is. Councillor Roberts, I'm finding it extremely difficult to believe that we are actually dealing with all this minutia. Uh, I thought this was a no-brainer that this would go sail, would sail right through. Um, you cannot, I don't imagine, get the sign or the, the school board without the sign. It's going to come one piece, kit and caboodle, if you're going to put it on there. A sponsor is not going to pay to put up a sign with the, maybe the assurance that you'll get the advertising on it later. I think most of these signs come through as one piece okay. and if Pepsi's going to sponsor it that's how that scoreboard coming through you can't just you're not going to stick an, an extra panel on it on top of it or below it after the fact and Pepsi or whoever else is sponsoring it's not going to pony up the money without uh, some assurance up front that they they're going to get their name on that sign um, and I, again I, I put my faith in the planning board to make sure that what we have up there is decent could we I move the Amendment. The amendment to the amendment. I mean, oh. can I say something before you ask to move the question? I just want to respond on the timing issue because it's easy to criticize the council for taking a month or two to decide an issue that affects some major public land, but I think it's important um, and needs to be said that the council was unaware of this until it was in the council package. And for people who are wanting to erect large signs on town property, um, something could have been brought forth in April, May, or June. And so if there is a reason for a time crunch, it, I don't believe it's because the council wants to take a little time to review it. I personally believe it's because um, it was not brought before us in a timely fashion. So again, I support the sign but I, I would like to clarify the first contact was in late may and it would have been on the june agenda except when when mr iris called in late may i was out of the country and uh that's why it, you know they did start sooner than than you know just in the last week or so he actually began calling in may okay may. well and, and i appreciate that thank you but since we've only seen it, I don't think I, it's I, I didn't want their to. criticism that we should pass something <coughs> immediately. Mm -hmm. so I will. Do I need I to will, give you an acceptance to the Countess amendment? Councilor Swift Payada has asked to call the amendment, so if yes, she's and I, I accept it. So she has the accepted the if and if you'll accept the Was there a second on the amendment? Okay, and it's been called. So all in favor of the amendment of Mr. Backer's, of Councillor Council. Backer. All in favor of Councillor Backer's amendment to the amendment. Councillor McGinty, first, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Now. Don't I get the vote? <laughs> all opposed. Thank you. Councillor Roberts. Six one. 
Yes. Thank you. Now we need to vote on the Swiss Kiata Amendment. Can that be with as, as amended as by amended. the backer? Thank you. As amended by the backer. And if I could just recap so that we all try Thank to you. remember mm -hmm. what what that amendment was. It was that um, we uh, amend, I believe it was Councilor Mould's original um, motion, that um, to the effect that the signage that the com any commercial signage that would be attached to this scoreboard um, come back after the planning board come back to the town council for our review and approval since we are the property owner. All in favor? Six, six in favor. Any opposed? One opposed? And now the main motion as moved by Councillor Moles, which can you read that back to us, Jackie? Yes. The main motion the main is the consideration of a request to, place to authorize board. an application and to the to planning board. An application to the planning board. All in favor? One, two, three, four, five, six. All opposed? One. Item 270304, consideration of the approval of a quick claim deed to John Peters and Stephen Peters for parcels map U23 lot 002B and map U43 lot 35. And if the town manager can speak to that item. Mm -hmm. yes. Under the town council policy for tax acquired properties, uh, if the original owners come forward and are willing to pay the total amount due in interest, principal, and fees, uh, it has been the town's policy to file a quit claim deed returning the property to the original owners. In this case, the owners were Stephen M. and John C. Peters for a lot, uh, a very small lot on Ocean House Road and a small lot on Susan Road, uh, both of which are unbuildable, and for reasons of uh, you know, other financing that, that they're looking to obtain. They want to clear their credit history uh, in this instance and, and wipe off the record of foreclosure. That is the reason why uh, they're asking for it to uh, be returned to them. And they're willing to pay the, uh, uh, the sum of, uh, they, they've given us a check, and I put the sheet aside. Whatever the amount of three hundred and right to seven dollars more than that. And, and what it's Pretty proposed is the amount of those taxes that were legally permitted would go back to the tax account and the amount of the taxes that were not committed because in some years the it was owned by the town and wasn't exempt that the, the balance went to the, the what i would call the seventy five thousand dollar account uh which is the revenue uh for uh sale of property this year so the, the tax indebtedness would be applied to the tax account and the the balance would be applied to the uh seventy five thousand dollars Sale of property. McGinty. Essentially, we own this property. We're basically giving it back to them. So you're giving it back to the original owner under the current town council policy for property for foreclosure. Two motion. So moved. Second. 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 Any discussion? All in favor? Seven zero. Item 28-03-04, consideration of setting a public hearing for August 11th for, my, um, for an amendment to the Code of Ordinances which would provide the council members would receive no remuneration that is pay for their services as members of the town council. Were we intending to set the public hearing for tonight? Was that a mistake? Carry over. Uh, what had happened was at your May council meeting, you set a public hearing for the June council meeting to do this. It was duly advertised, and the town manager duly left it off the agenda. Uh, uh, totally my fault. So, you know, it seems to me that we, we ought to re advertise this issue 
uh, since the Charter provides that the compensation of members of the Town Council shall be set by ordinance. So uh, that's the reason this is before you again to set a public hearing and uh, it would be in order for you to uh, resolve this issue uh, by having a public hearing at uh, a subsequent meeting. Thank you. Is there a... I apologize for that error. Is there a motion to move that we set a public hearing for August 11th to amend the Code of Ordinances? Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? I'd like to offer an alternative uh, language to uh, totally eliminating the $350. Uh, and I've misplaced my section that, that of the charter that it's in or the uh, ordinance. But basically, this is supposed to be a, by charter, it's supposed to be in the ordinance. It never was. Um, and we really need to put it back in. So the public hearing to put it in there should be done. I'm going to pass around the potential language. Um, what I would prefer to see us have is that the annual compensation of the town council should be $350, subject to an appropriation in the annual budget. That would preclude uh, any fee for this current year, as we had in the budget process we had eliminated it. Um, I had sent around information to folks earlier that, um, on average, other communities are getting paid close to $1,800 per, per year. Uh, Cape, I threw out Cape Elizabeth and Portland as we were extremely low and Portland was off the curve as far as what the other 14 towns were getting. My concern is that we've got, we're sending the wrong message. Number one, our service is valuable. Number two, we do pay a lot of costs out of pocket, whether it be traveling around town, using up our gas to check out items that are on the agenda. We may be telling people who aren't, who aren't, perhaps as financially secure as the folks on the council at this time, that if you want to run for council, be prepared to pay out of pocket for those costs that come up, whether you have uh, child care costs or other expenses, that by not getting even a small fee like this, it may be enough to, to keep them from running. Um, there's an impression out there that everyone in Cape Elizabeth is rich. Well, that's not true. And just to say that, therefore, if you're going to run on the, be a member of the council, you've got to be well enough off to take care of all those other pocket expenses. So I would like to amend the motion to read that uh, per the section appropriate, the annual compensation of the town council shall be $350 subject to an appropriation in the annual budget. And I hope somebody would second that. I'll second that. Is there any discussion? Councillor Backer. I support the amendment or the, uh, the motion of uh, Councillor Roberts. When I ran for town council this year, I ran as a volunteer. I didn't even know that there was compensation uh, as a town councillor. It wasn't until I attended one of the budget meetings shortly before the election that I heard the discussion of the then sitting council members to not pay the council fee for the 2003-2004 budget year. I wasn't disappointed, didn't know there was any pay. Um, but I agree with Council Roberts that although I certainly expected to serve as a volunteer, and I still expect to serve as a volunteer, I don't want to impose that obligation on anybody else for whom the $350, as meager as it may be, could make the difference between their decision to run or decision not to run and serve as a town councilor. Um, I will state as a matter of record at this point that should the council approve the payment of a $350 fee the councillors during any year that I am serving, I will pay that money back to the council, back to the town uh, for use in the town's general fund because it's simply not my intent to take a fee and that's not why I ran. But again, it's not a standard that I would want to impose on anybody else. And looking at the pay to councillors in surrounding communities, we are woefully underpaid for the time we spend. I'm not suggesting that we raise our pay. Um, but 
I don't think that people should be expected to serve and commit the amount of time that they do over the course of a year or over the course of three years as a town councilor without any compensation. So I support uh, the motion of Council Rob. If I might add, Madam Chairman, Chairman. Uh, I would like it if Councilor Roberts could mention some of the annual stipends that the town councilors and other towns are currently receiving. Because again, I think it goes back to, I have two issues with this. Issue number one is that it goes back to what we do for the town, what value does it have? And that I think it's a bad precedent to say that we should receive no remuneration. Uh, it makes it look as if what we do doesn't have value, and it, and it certainly has quite a bit of value to the town. Uh, the other issue I have with it is that if this is the case, this should have been voted on by the last town council. I'm, I don't like to see things dragged on to the next town council. Uh, last month, you may recall, we had the waste transfer uh, people come in and tell us what the new fee schedule was going to be, uh, which I found out was already in the budget, even though it hadn't been voted and approved. It should have been voted and approved prior to the new council coming on if it was in the budget and done. Uh, I don't like the way this has been handled. I don't like the way that here we are halfway into the summer, we're voting to cancel out remuneration for the town councilors. Uh, so if, if you could indulge Councilor Roberts, perhaps he could give us a few numbers from the surrounding towns. He'd love to accept it. It's on his desk at work. I've been on vacation for a week. But I know they ranged from $500, I believe what Councilor Baca has it, great. <laughs> While we're passing this around, uh, I have a question I didn't understand. Is this, to, is this being proposed as a charter change? In no. Language? The, the charter states that the council, um, and the correct term is not remuneration, I believe, the correct term is um, annual compensation is spelled out in charter. It is supposed to be in the uh, town ordinance. It is not in the town ordinance. It has never been accepted by ordinance. So what I'm recommending is that we follow the council, the, the town charter and place this language into ordinance form. So that, uh, and then the amount would be the 350 that we have been traditionally getting for years. Uh, we would not get it this year because it was not uh, approved in the uh, budget deliberations. And next year, it have to, and for following years, it, have, it would have to be reconsidered. And again, just so that somebody doesn't believe that it's self-serving on my part, I will follow Councilor Backer's lead. Well, I'm gonna dedicate that my $350 a year is gonna go to the uh, trail maintenance and upkeep for the, through the Conservation Commission, uh, if we should get it. So the council pays that uh, other communities are getting for the record. Cumberland receives 1,200, the chairman 1,200. Falmouth, 600, the chairman 600. Freeport, 400, the chairman 500. Gorham, 2,300, the chair 25. Gray, 2,000, chair 2,000. Portland, 5,160, the chair 6,528. Scarborough, 1,500, the chair gets 1,700. South Portland, 3,000 for both. Wyndham, 1260 for both, Yarmouth, uh, 1200 for both, and I did take and I removed Cape and uh, Portland from that equation, and it figured out to about $1,800 as an, as an, on average for all of those communities. Uh, there's a reason, and I don't know what it is, but for years all communities have had these. It's, it's, uh, and if you look across the country, councils get paid. There are also provisions with school board members get paid. I know that had been an issue with some folks. I believe our charter specifies that the school board shall not get paid. Certainly somebody could come forward and recommend a, a, a charter change, but uh, uh, I know in South Portland the uh, council members, the school board members get paid, and two or three other towns that I called and asked if I wanted those figures, and I told them I did not. I was, not, I was only checking the council at that time. Um, so. That, that's my pitch. I know that, like I said, there are a lot of costs out of pocket that serving as councilors that we are constantly being asked, even through different fundraising groups, that know we're on the council. And we lead by writing a check to the 
all these different things that are going on that as most private citizens in town probably don't get hit as often as we do to support those things. And I don't mind giving it up, but I don't like the idea of saying, uh, as, as a voluntary gesture on my part, I just don't think it's a good message to send out that, that everybody in town is, have sufficient means that we don't, shouldn't be paying our council members. Councillor Smith, yeah. um, I have a uh, couple of questions. I just want to make sure I understand. Um, and perhaps these are for the manager because he knows all this stuff backwards and forwards. So right now, the current situation is that the charter, what does the charter designate? It de does it designate that the council be paid? And if so, does it designate a certain amount? Yeah, there's a section on compensation in, I think it's out of it. Right. Two of the charter. Yeah, I just it found it. <laughs> and what, what it provides is the compensation of the council shall be set by ordinance. Okay. And then it goes on to how, how other compensation is set of other municipal officials. Okay. So it indicates that they're, that compens, assuming by them saying compensation, by it saying compensation, that there is some sort of compensation or no compensation, but the actual amount of it is set by ordinance. Set by ordinance. Okay, then I have a question for Councillor Roberts. Um, so is what you're proposing here, Jack, an alternative to item number 28, just totally different? You're not trying to amend item 28. I'm just proposing an alternative. So basically you're speaking against item 28, and then you would be proposing basically. this separately. <laughs> no, I just want to make sure I understand where we are procedurally. Well, um, I am sure that none of us would want to say that just because one is unpaid for work that one's service is not valuable because that would be putting us in the horrible situation of saying that our school board, which is not paid, that their service is not valuable and it is extremely valuable. Um, I am was one of the proponents for um, back during the budget season for the council uh, giving up its pay uh, purely as a way to try to save money. And it didn't work out to a whole lot of money. It worked, I mean, as these things go, uh, in a municipal budget, it worked out to, I think, 20, around $2,400. Um, I think that all of us on the council and probably, well, and those on the school board too, even though they don't get paid, um, end up giving back their compensation to the community, whether it's directly to a, a department of the town or whether it's to the rescue unit or the Con conservation commission or the library or whatever their choice is. It is immaterial to me what the ordinance says um, as long as we aren't going to have to uh, try and come up with the money this year because I think it's out of the budget. I will always probably be proposing every year, every budget, uh, year that this is an, a, a place we should look to give up money, especially since the school board is not paid. Um, I have trouble justifying paying ourselves for a service that is um, of equal value to theirs. And, and so I see this as a budget saving. If we, um, it, it, to me it seems strange to say that we would have it uh, set by ordinance at 350 and then get rid of it every year as a budget saving uh, measure but if that but that may be the w the different will of different councils that during different years so I'm fine with keeping it the way it is at $350 or not the way it is because that's the way it is now is that it's sort of nowhere um, as I understand it but I'm fine with saying it is at $350 since I'm sure um, that would mean this year we're not going to have to come up with this extra. It wouldn't be paid during this year. Correct. But I will be proposing, again, as your budget chair, <laughs> in the spring, that it is something that we should think about when we come to those moments of very difficult decisions when we try to decide whether to spend $2,400 on hazardous waste or environmental issues or the school system, or any of the roads, any of the myriad of needs in this community, I must say that while I am sympathetic to the argument that it may dissuade people 
um, from running. I um, am also, I am much more sympathetic to the argument that we are the, the thing that can, our pay can be much more easily cut than a few thousand dollars of some of the other more critical needs in town. So I'm, I'm fine uh, with supporting Councillor Roberts, but fair warning, I'll be proposing us not actually paying it again probably every year on, on the council. What I'm going to do at this point is rule Councillor Roberts' motion out of order. <laughs> we will take Councillor Fritz's motion first. If you support Councillor Roberts' motion, you should vote against Councillor Fritz's motion. Okay. That works. So if there's any further discussion on Councillor Fritz's motion, seeing none, all in favor? One. All opposed? Would you like me to give a full language on how it should read? Now, Tacky if you would language? like to make your motion. All right, I would move that the, in accordance with uh, section 1-2-3, council pay, members of the town council shall um, re receive an annual compensation of the town council shall be $350 subject to an appropriation in the annual budget. So that's your section and the pursuant to the so is that clear enough for everybody? Okay. okay. Point of information, and would that mean that if it were not appropriated in the budget, it would not be paid? That's, Correct. That's the language. Okay. Yep. Point of order. I am not allowed to think of a member of the group, but just clarifying, that's part of your motion, Jack, to set that for public hearing August 11th. That would still go to public hearing as well, yes. Councilor Backer. Procedurally, does this need to go to the Ordinance Committee or not? Does any change in the Ordinance go before the Ordinance Committee? It does not have to. Not necessarily. It doesn't have to. No. And if the, if they decide, decide I will as such. Also, I have a procedural motion. This will be a motion to have a public hearing. We will immediately have a public hearing and then a vote. Is that, that's that's how that works. works. Okay. Councilor Mole. Back now. We didn't have that. Okay, any further discussion? <coughs> All in favor? 7 0. Thank you. Okay, the public hearing on the proposed ordinance that the town council's <coughs> compensation shall be $350, mm. subject to an appropriation in the annual budget, is now open. Seeing nobody here to discuss this matter, we will close the public hearing. The chairman needs coaching. Do we? <laughs> oh, I wasn't paying attention. I'm sorry. I was going to the next item. Do we need the motion? Do we need a new motion now to adopt the on, ordinance? We voted on. Cash. No, we just had the public hearing. No, no, no public, no, no, public no. hearing. That's, That's the August meeting. meeting. That's the public. <laughs> okay. I guess I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to item, I can't believe we're going to spend more time on this, I guess. Item 29 is a request to confirm the nomination of Dana Lee of Mechanic Falls as a candidate for vice president of the Maine Municipal Association, and I believe Councillor Swift Teada will discuss this item. Yes, I'd like to thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this uh, item has to do with uh, the Maine Municipal Association, of which I am on the Executive Committee, and I would like to nominate um, Dana Lee to be a candidate for Vice President of the Maine Municipal Association. Each town uh, board of selectmen or a town council or whatever has to take an actual vote, so we will be, he, he is a candidate as is William Briggio, who is the city manager of the town of the city of Augusta. The reasons I am supporting Dana Lee are from my, my personal knowledge of, of both candidates. They're both um, excellent city managers, in my opinion. They've been um, 
good board members to work with, but I think that uh, Dana Lee has been, uh, has done yeoman service for Maine Municipal Association. He has served on the Strategic and Finance Committee for several years. That's the, the Policy and Budget Development Committee. He now chairs that committee. He has been on the Legislative Policy Committee for over six years. He is chairing and is the leader of the property tax relief and tax reform effort that it has gathered over 100,000 signatures in the state and um, will be having a referendum. The state will be voting on a referendum on tax reform um, this fall on that. He has demonstrated great leadership, I believe, and I think he's an excellent candidate. And due to his uh, service and personal qualities, I think he'd be an excellent candidate. Your second. Second. Sorry, yes, some clarification. Are you intending then for the town's ballot to be cast uh, for yes. the nominated candidate with the exclusion of vice yes. president? Yes, I'm sorry. I, foc the ballot be I focused. I focused on on, on Mr. Lee, but I should also mention that the ballot for election of the 2004 executive committee and officers is it was before all of you on the podium. The president. Um, the candidate is Jolene Lovejoy, who is a selectman from the town of Rumford. She is currently the vice president. The vice president, which is a one-year term and usually leads to the presidency, there are two candidates, William Briggio, city manager, city of Augusta, and Dana Lee, the town manager of Mechanic Falls, the person who, um, this is the only contested race. And then executive committee members are listed. There's Clinton Deshane for a one-year term. Ruth Martin, Andrew Hart, Gordon Paul, all for three-year terms. So uh, thank you for clarifying that, Mr. Manager. So we're actually casting our ballot tonight, not confirming yes. the nomination. Yes. We're yes. doing both, yes. The ballot was before us on the podium. I, I think it wasn't in the package. I forgot. To yeah, the that. ballot came on July, is dated July 19th. Because I noted the nomination paper so. we do on July 7th, so yeah. I guess it's... And I, I think the motion is to confirm the nomination papers that went in without a council vote and then to and cast, then the ballot. cast the ballot. And there was a second? I second. All in. Any further discussion? <coughs> yes, Madam Chairman. Mike. Not so much. Aren't you running for something? Anything? No, I've, I've already done the MMA thing. And oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, we're, we're very well represented there by uh, Ian. Uh, Just didn't want to leave you out of consideration. We don't do enough international trips for him. <laughs> Any further discussion? Thank you. <laughs> All in oh, I'm sorry, Councillor Backer. Well, just to make one point here, I was initially inclined to oppose this because I felt that we had um, within our midst a better candidate, um, and that was our own Councillor Swift Chaotic to encourage her to run for the position of vice president, but only after she assured me that that was not in the cards for this year, that she had bigger fish to fry. Not this year. This year. Um, and only for that reason am I supporting uh, Dana Lee's nomination. I thank my fellow counselors for the amazing compliment. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor? 7-0. Item 30-03-04 is a request to approve certain balances to be carried forward. If we could hear from the town manager. I'll take a couple of minutes to very quickly go through these. GIS is Geographic Information Systems. This is for updating of some of our mapping. It was not done this past year because of the uh, family leave of the planner. That's uh, why we're proposing to carry that forward. Roadway improvements, uh, 100, nearly 145,000. The fund balance would actually be less than that because there's an account payable in that for the Cottage Farm Road project as well, but it's routine to carry that over. Dump truck replacement, that was funded over two years. Last year's budget is also an appropriation in this year's budget for 2004. Both funds together will pay for the dump truck. Playground improvements are donations that have been made for playgrounds in the last year. The 25,000 for revaluation reflects the town council budget discussion to continue to pay for one year uh, the salary of uh, a clerical position in the assessing code planning office. And there's also a small allowance in there in, in case there's additional expenses uh, related to the revaluation legal and 
other needs uh, over the uh, this fiscal year. Major system software is something that's actually been ordered. It's uh, changing the uh, a lot of the software uh, to a Windows-based system right now. It's on a proprietary uh, software system. Thermal imaging camera, 16,000. That was the money left over with donations after they bought the camera. Use of SERP was 210,000. That was in the budget and was the amount that was not listed for the carrier board balance a year ago, causing us some challenges. Dugout fund, this was a few years ago, some folks raised some money to, to build nice dugouts at the high school, and $3,650 came in and it was never done. Uh, it's donated funds. I, you know, we, I'm not <coughs> sure what's going to happen with that eventually, but recommend that it be carried forward. Uh, police donations, fire donations, library gifts to carry forward donations. Cruiser replacement, uh, this uh, was again contemplated in the budget to try to hold off buying the cruisers that were planned for the previous fiscal year uh, to try to extend out the life of them as much as possible. Fire vehicle reserve is, is an annual set aside so that when we uh, buy the next fire truck, there'll be able to put some money in the account. Greenbelt improvements is actually two accounts placed together, the Gullcrest Trail and the Greenbelt all into one account. Community services, uh, try to July 1, 184,000 had already come in for the summer program. The rescue received a, a very generous request from Gertrude Royal, 108,750, and Family Fund Days had donations of 3750. That adds up. <coughs> Proposed carry for down to 960,500. The auditors came today and were looking for this list, so uh, it's time. I'll move approval. Second. Second. Any discussion? Councilor Roberts? Just one question on the thermal imaging camera. Since the camera was purchased, will that money stay with the fire department for other needs that they might have? I still hold the position that was donated for the thermal imaging camera and it ought to be left in an account with that specific name uh, for either maintenance of the equipment or for replacement of a camera uh, at some point because it was specifically raised for that purpose. Great, that works. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? Seven. Zero. And um, we were at that point in our meeting where if citizens wish to dis further discuss items not on the agenda, they are welcome to do so. <laughs> I see one citizen. I think one of our citizens is waiting for something to be signed so he can open tomorrow morning. <laughs> okay, I will close that part of the meeting and the last item on the agenda, item 310304, is a request to enter executive session to review two applications for poverty abatement. I will um, just take a moment to inform the home audience that we will not be coming back on television tonight. We will be going into a brief work session to discuss our goals and objectives. Do I have a motion on the executive session? So moved. Second? All in favor? Seven zero. Thank you.